Welcome to the Cross Border Interviews. I'm your host, Christopher Brown. In this episode, we recently ventured to Regina, Saskatchewan for the 2024 SUMA Convention. Now, amidst the networking, breakout sessions, and speeches from provincial party leaders, we engaged with local elected leaders hailing from across Saskatchewan. Though this episode may be briefer than our standard episodes, its significance remains undiminished. Today, we delve into the pressing issues confronting one community firsthand, amplifying the voice of municipal leaders and offering insights into diverse challenges faced by local governments in Saskatchewan. So we'll be right back after a quick message with cross-border interviews featuring Village of La Lage Mayor Georgina Jolibus. Are you passionate about local governance and municipal issues? Do you believe in the power of community-driven conversations? Then join us at the Cross Border Network, where we bring together voices from across Canada to shine a spotlight on the challenges and the triumphs of our municipalities. But we need your support to keep the conversation going. Visit crossborderinterviews.ca today to show your support by backing the show monthly or making a one-time annual donation. Your contribution will help us grow and expand our reach, bringing important stories to even more listeners across the nation. Together, we can make a difference. Together, we can amplify the voices of local communities. Together, we can shape a brighter future for all. Cross Border Network, where local matters and your support counts. Visit us today at crossborderinterviews.ca. Yeah. Georgina, thank you so much for doing this. Greatly appreciate it. I want to start by asking a simple question, if you don't mind. Okay. And that is, where did your sense of duty to serve your community come from? You know, when I was a teenager, uh, back in the day at the high school, we had the way this, it's set up in La Lache. The high school was set up and there was no gymnasium. And then the elementary school had the gymnasium. And my phys ed class, our phys ed class, and there was no bus either back in the day. And to walk that about kilometer, and we would end up missing the phys ed class. That irritated me, and back then I thought, this has got to be better. We have to do a better job, and that's when I had that thinking in my head that I can do something to help the community. So this is one of my pleasures, because you not only served as the mayor, mm -hmm. but you were also an MP, Correct. Member of Parliament, for Saskatchewan as well. So what brought you into the municipal realm? Because you've now, you've served federally and you've served municipally, but what is it about the municipal that draw that keeps you there? Family. Okay. And uh, from 20, 2003, 2015, and then 2015 to 19 is the, the MP years and then 2020 and then to current my family we are a strong Dene family and i in right in the community is where we grew up and i do have family on the reserve and and i do belong to clearwater river Dene nation and my chief is teddy clark and so the Dene strong cultural connection family connection and Culturally, that's how I grew up in. Um, municipalities are at a crossroads right now. Municipalities are struggling with a lot of issues that they weren't traditionally struggling with 15, 20 years ago. The, the, the role of the municipality and the services they provide has changed. In your opinion, do you see the municipality addressing more and more issues that are traditionally in the provincial jurisdiction or even the federal jurisdiction? It is, from what I've observed in the past few years, there is a lot of downloading to the municipalities from the province and that is taking a toll on the municipalities and I think that is very unfair. As a municipal leader, we don't necessarily, when the province do download to a municipality, the province does not provide the resources funding and the proper training to do what it is that they're looking for us and I think that's unfair and we in our municipalities I think I believe we love what we do and we enjoy our communities and we want it to evolve we want it to grow we want it to to thrive 
But again, it is unfair when the province is downloading tests. So do you mind me asking, because I ask on the show about the challenges each individual municipality is facing, but before I often ask it, I say this is a conversation between the mayor and myself, not a motion of council, not a direction of council, but your opinion. In your opinion, what do you believe is the biggest challenge facing your community today? There are a number of avenues, a uh, number of challenges I meant. We are on the northwest side of the province, so we are in northern Saskatchewan. And the funding that we get is t to cover specific funding, sweet, uh, sewer and water, the local streets, the office, and the rink and the recreation and the other pieces. It's really specific. The huge challenges that we face, mental health, addictions, and health care issues, education. Our children are going to school, however, uh, right now the province is in the middle of, of uh, uh, the, the negotiating with the teachers, lack of housing. You know, it's amazing how even the community like Lalash, we, there is a branch, a Methy housing branch under Northern Village of Lalash, and it's acquired funding and building homes. As much as the houses that we've built, and I think we've built close to 200 in the past 15 years, we're not able to keep up with the amount with the amount of people who are who are still homeless, and more and more people are coming forward and saying, "I need a home. I I can't afford. I don't have enough money to build to buy land and to build my own, but I need assistance. I need a home, and housing is is one of the biggest issues that we're facing." So how do you, as a municipality, and I say you as the royal you, as in council and yourself? address those issues when you realize that they are provincial issues because mental health and addictions is not a municipal issue but municipalities are dealing with it today so does Lalage have programs in place or are you looking at programs to offer to residents who are struggling right now the role that we are taking on as leadership mayor and council is of advocacy we have to advocate on behalf of our residents. Our residents are coming to us and saying, "Who? where do I go for a mental health support? Where do I go for my addiction support? And Saskatchewan Health Authority has the, it should be able to provide us with the necessary services. And so we, the leadership, often become the voice for the people. They come to us and they share, share their stories with us. And it is, many of them are really struggling and the need for services is always there. Do you feel like you're making headways with this government or with the leaders of the opposition or even the federal government around addressing some of these issues? Uh, as you know, in 2016, my community had the uh, school shooting and the effects of that school shooting and the tra traumatic experience that it was uh, everything is compound, then we got COVID, and then we got the different avenues. So the issue around mental health and addictions and the support around that, as a, municipal, as a municipality, we continuously advocate provincially and federally. And I'm pleased when I make a request for a meeting with the ministers, I get that, and I appreciate that. And my municipality appreciates that we, I can send an email and minister and they respond, the office responds, and, I, and, I, and my municipality is able to get the face-to-face the -face meeting. So I want to flip the script and not talk about just challenges because mm -hmm. I don't like to say that all municipalities have challenges, which they do, but what's the thing that you are proud of about Lalash? What is the thing that when you look at all the challenges you face, there's always that one thing that you go back to and say, you know what, we're getting this right. We are still hanging on to, though it is challenging, our language and culture. I'm a Dene and I speak my language and I was really proud when I was the MP, stood in the House of Commons and able to speak Dene. And I also played a critical role with a core group of MPs to have the language legislation incorporated federally. So I'm very proud of the fact that Lalash is still able to hang on to, yes, it's challenging because we have a vast amount of young population. The resilience, the community, we are very, very lucky and we, ble and we many of our residents 
who who have faith, who believe a spirit, native spirituality or Catholicism or other faith, we thank the Creator for the support that we get and the resilience that we have. And I think that makes the community really strong and unique. So I want to ask a question and I, you can answer it in English if you want or if you don't mind, if you can answer it in Dene, that would be amazing okay. because it's, this would be the first time on the show where someone has spoken Dene on the show. In your opinion, what makes Lalash such a unique place to live, to work, and to raise a family? Nuhni, Dene Sumchini, Deitliya. Lusha, Hanilt and Ohayatik, Ilniu, Hanilt and Dene, Gode, Honultan, Nitem. Nuhni, Dene Sumchine, Honnesot in, I know what I need, Dene did, a hood and oo, no hot say any. Nine deo tan now, Honda Zelha. As soon as he had tea, kill new, need the name, Let me translate. Thank you for this opportunity. We, the Dene people, it's very strong in Lalash in a way. Uh, the Dene language and the culture, those small in group that we have, the elders, and when you're entered the community, you can hear the Dene language spoken. There is language and culture. When we look at our history, we, I acknowledge my ancestors, my family, and my upbringing, and, and our close connection to the land. And I believe the community still has that, and it's really strong, I believe. We've got a lot of work to do, but it's strong. The opportunity to pass it on to the kids, to the young people, and so that they can carry on. And, and I can proudly say uh, that's what we still have in the community. Mayor, I want to thank you so much. For thank this. you. And thank you so much for sitting down with you me. Bet. Much appreciated. Thank you. Mercy. We want to thank the Saskatchewan Urban Municipality Association for inviting us to this year's SUMA AGM in Regina, Saskatchewan. This episode would not have been achievable without their support. So if today's episode sparked your interest, hit that subscribe button now. Stay in the loop with all our diverse content covering everything from municipal affairs to our in-depth conversations with municipal leaders from across Canada on the cross-border interviews or our eye-opening exploration of local governance in the political trenches, local government at work. We are your go-to platform for comprehensive municipal coverage, committed to keeping you well-informed as well as engaged. But... Your support is the backbone of our growth and the maintenance of this top-notch content you have come to enjoy. If you can, consider backing the show. Every contribution, big or small, amplifies the depth and the breadth of our programming. Find the support page link on the Cross Border Interviews website today. Until next time, stay informed, stay engaged, and most importantly, just keep talking. <laughs>